What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to Googlelicious for everything Google that we can pack inside of a show each week. So let's get to it. Now, lots of Google news this week, and we start off with the Chromecast. The Googs recently announced a public SDK for their digital media streaming stick, allowing developers to build support for casting in Android, Chrome, and even iOS apps and websites. Now, the Chromecast already supports the main services like Netflix, Hulu, HBO Go, and Pandora, and recently announced support for Plex and a few others. But it's still pretty slim pickings compared to the Roku and Apple TV, and this is going to help bring more content to the table very, very soon. Now, Google Glass is growing up fast while we wait for its official launch after they unveiled four new frames from what they call the Titanium Collection. They are super light frames made out of, guess what, titanium to counter the weight of the Google Glass add on and are compatible with prescription lenses. Now, the glass hardware will be able to attach the side with a single screw, and two different clip on sunglasses will be available as well, so you could look even cooler in the clubs or not. Now, the frames will also be covered by vision care provider VSP. They're available through Google for $225, and the Stunna shades will be $150, and that's without the glass system. Now, the G Unit also has released five new mini games for Glass in hopes that developers will be inspired to create games for the system. They include Tennis, Balance, Clay Shooter, Matcher, and Shape Slicer. Gaming with Glass looks kind of cool, and it would be pretty simple at first because of the available screen real estate, but I would advise not playing any of these in the public if you want to meet normal, friendly people or just <laughs> women. And following up on Google's Mystery Barge project that CNET was the first to get the scoop on and has been speculated to be everything from a Google Glass retail store or an interactive space to learn about tech to even a party boat for events, well, a California state agency says Google must move its Mystery Barge from its construction site on Treasure Island because it doesn't have the right permits. Now, once the project was revealed, construction has been going off and on. Google can resume activities by moving the barge to a fully permitted construction facility in the San Francisco Bay, but then it would be easier to see what they're actually doing, which Google doesn't want. See, Googs? It actually does kind of suck when you have someone looking over your shoulder, knowing what you're basically doing at all times when you don't want them to. And since our last show, you probably heard that Google recently sold Motorola Mobility, a group they acquired in 2011, and is now selling it to Lenovo for $2.91 billion. Lenovo will use the acquisition and Motorola name to continue their strong push into the smartphone market that has been a success overseas. One piece that was not part of the deal was the advanced technology and projects group that will remain with Google's Android team. Now, this is the group most well known for the Project RM modular phone, and it's a concept that we've been excited to see come together. And the good news is that the group will continue their work and other projects like security tattoos and biotech sensors. I actually have one of these tattoos, but I can't show it to you because my mom watches the show. All right, let's check out some quick hits. Ouya, the Android based gaming console, will bring a new 16 gig. $129 model that's double the storage in the color matte black and will also bring improved Wi-Fi, performance improvements, and controller enhancements as well. The console was received with lukewarm reviews and the game library really needs to significantly improve to make it a compelling purchase, so we'll see what they're up to. Also, HTC's new flagship phone, the M8, has been outed by the ever so reliable EvLeaks for a late March release with the launch in New York City. Now, rumor sites have been pointing to Mobile World Congress in February, so we'll have to wait and see how that shakes out. And some more cool leaked shots of the Red Nexus 5, a phone I actually want to get my hands on with an internal notice from Sprint that says we could see it on February the 4th. Now, it's the perfect gift and the color of love for that someone special on Valentine's Day. And who gets a new smartphone for someone on Valentine's Day? I'm guessing the same people who buy someone a car for Christmas. So, all right, guys, you may not get a phone, but Googleicious is going to hook you up with some killer cases from our friends at Spec Products for the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the HTC One. Now, I have three cases for each phone. Do the math. That's six winner winner chicken dinners. All you guys have to do is tell me what picture I used in last week's episode when I talked about Samsung's Galaxy Glass plans because I care. Email me at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and we'll randomly pick and announce the winners next week. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Tong, and we'll see you guys next week for some more of that Googleicious. Google